There's something I just want to say, Rosalina, before I'm able to actually continue uh, collecting those Power Stars. You look very interesting to say the least, especially how the fact that why is your left eye still covering your... Well, your hair is still covering your left eye? Hmm, I might be curious to try that out, but I'm guessing she refused to do that. Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Piglet here once again, and I'm back for some more of the yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more as play of Super Mario Galaxy for the Nintendo Wii. So, last time we actually did manage to beat the likes out of Bowser for the first time, and especially noticeable that we did manage to able to still collect those Power Stars, even especially noticeable that we did manage to continue exploring through the forms of the Fountain Dome, by simply exploring through by the forms of the Battle Rock Galaxy and Hurry Suri Galaxy, and especially noticeable with the forms of the Hungry Luma stage, by the forms of the Sling Pod Galaxy, so... Yeah, today for this episode is the fact that we are about to be exploring through the next new dawn, which is basically, it's a kitchen dome, because as you can see, we got ourselves a whole bunch of, like, uh, calories and all that stuff, especially with the forms of that little nice little, uh, fire they actually put up with, especially noticeable by the forms of the actual, like, boiling pots and all that stuff. So anyways, though, enough about the, uh, um, exploration inside in this place. See, Fernando, let's get into the forms of the first stage, or in this case, the first galaxy, in the Kitchen Dome. And that is the Beach Ball Galaxy. So the first mission we have is Sunken Treasure. Hmm, I wonder if there's going to be some pl plethora of treasures, especially gold in mind. But I'm guessing because of how the fact that well, I was be very curious to see if what treasure they actually hold us to, so... Anyways though, so uh, yeah, as you probably expected is that today was actually forms of uh, the 31st of uh, January, in this case the final day of uh, January's 2019. So in this case tomorrow is going to be February tomorrow. See, but then though, not only is it February tomorrow, but it's also the fact that um, I, be I believe um, how to train your dragon the hidden world, in this case how to train your dragon, um, how to train your Dragon 3, The Hidden World, usually that some people usually call it that, uh, is about to be out on the cinemas and during the likes of in tomorrow, specifically on the UK, because I could assume that um, in the United States of the American version will not be uh, able to release that until the 8th of February. See, even then though, I'm still very excited for that film actually. Even then, I've seen the first one already, but I still have not seen the second film yet, which I still need to able to get into, because even then though, as far as I've heard, from any uh, critics and fans alike, How to Train Your Dragon series is probably is the best DreamWorks films they've ever seen to put up with, which either way, I will have to agree on, agree on that, because even then, the atmosphere is absolutely outstanding, especially how the fact that the story itself is very interesting to say the least, especially in the forms of the first film in the series, but even then though, they did eventually get themselves the forms of the, uh, the TV series, but I haven't really watched the TV series in such a quite a long time, because even then though, because, well, recently I was really into the forms of the Penguins of Madagascar, and especially noticeable by the forms of, uh, you know, Kung Fu Panda, Legends of Awesomeness TV series, and especially noticeable with the most iconic ones back in the day, but he forms within the Cartoon Network era, which is of course the Powerpuff Girls, but he forms of the 1998 counterparts. Speaking of the Powerpuff Girls, the 1998 version, is that recently I've managed to able to order myself, but he forms of a, well, the first ever DVD, well, the second DVD that was based off from the Powerpuff Girls, most notably in the original standpoint, is the fact that I've managed to able to, Oh, I was really hoping I can able to make ourselves there without even activating that switch over there, but I'm guessing that, that the, my wall jumps doesn't seem to work properly, so, yeah, no matter what though, I'll just activate one at least, see, even then though, well, Aside from that though, there's just not much else I can really say, but other than the fact that the actual DVD I've actually uh, ordered by the forms of the Powerpuff Girls and the forms of the TV series, I actually did order the main event, which is basically that one episode how the fact that uh, Blossom's hair is actually a little bit more different compared to the forms of uh, Bubbles and Buttercup's um, hair. So naturally speaking, that's the reason why I've decided to able to purchase that specific DVD compilation, because so far anyway, well, as far as when I'm used to it now, um, I really enjoyed it. Oh yeah, by the way, here we actually unlock ourselves, Rosalina's library has been opened, now we can read the, um, the storybook, which even then, I'll show that off whenever we finish up the entire let's play of the game, and especially by the forms of until then, that we can able to show that off in the extras video and stuff, but even then, 
the would be up at some point in the future. See, for now, not now though, because we got some more missions to deal with. <coughs> Excuse me, I got something in my throat there. I do apologize for that. So anyways, though, the next mission we have is passing the swim test. So this can be that only be one solution that we can able to just to describe this is that what else we need to do some swimming. But here's the catch though, is the fact that I believe this coach right there were able to actually tell us something that we need supposed to do. So even then that will surely, um, sorry I really can't speak today for this point folks because I, I know for the fact that I'm still a little bit rusty with news and updates and all that stuff but then again I'm just a little bit too nitpicky at this point so you're here to take the swimming school's final swim test? Yes. This test is all about underwater swim collect uh, shell collecting. Bring me back the gold shell and it's an automatic A grid for you. So, basically what we have to do in this particular mission is very simple and self-explanatory. We need to simply, we need to able to take the golden shell out of the forms of those uh, trios of penguins right there as they swim by. But the one on the front though actually got the, uh, the golden shell. So we'll just snack it off him by simply just shaking the Wii remote. So that might be the only solution you can think of. And carefully bring it back to the forms of the coach and there you go. So even then though, yeah, amazing. I didn't think you'll actually be able to bring it back. Well then, here's a big gold medal for you. In this case, a power star. D uh, do not even try to able to throw it away right in front of the forms of the coach because all you have to do is basically have to try again. Well, luckily though, it does manage to respawn on here. So nice job on the test, but you are even one of my students. Oh, really? Okay, that's very nice of you. But even then, I could appreciate about the fact that we've already, bump uh, we've already met twice by the forms of the first time around in Surfing 101. But now the second time by the forms of what else? Passing the swim test. So, yeah, kudos to you. Kudos to you. So anyways, we got 29 power stars and 1914 star bits that we've actually got so far anyway. And we'll head back to the forms of the, you know, beach ball galaxy and we'll do what else? Another mission. So, yeah, it looks like so far the majority of these uh, parts so far is going really, really fast. Especially because of how the fact that, you know, I've already got myself... Uh, 29 power stars, and then this one, this one might actually be my 30th power star. I, I really can't speak today for this point, folks. I do apologize. Uh, my 30th power star, I can able to actually get to this point. So even then, speaking of which, the next mission we have is the secret undersea cavern. So, but um, I can assuming in this mission it might actually contain a secret mission as well. But um, obviously, I'm gonna go for the secret power star first before I jump into the forms of the main missions. Uh. Power Star, and I do apologize by the forms of how the fact that I, I, the reason why I just uh, didn't match the A button like several times is because, well, for some odd reason, is that my Google Chrome always attempts to pop up whenever I was in the middle of recording, but it, it still works fine altogether. But either way, though, it's just a little bit more of a bugging thing as usually happens to me in my case. So, anyways, though, so the secret mission, as far as you can see. Now we need to take the green shell right where the treasure chest is and basically this is where you're able to actually lead up to the forms of this particular planet right here. So uh, yeah, you were expected at this point, huh? And look at that, we have a quite a uh, cataquark that usually makes a return ever since in Super Mario Sunshine. But even then though, it still functions as the same way for how it does in Mario, or in this case in Super Mario Sunshine. And it's also the ones in the forms of... Uh, Mario Kart Double Dash, but he forms within a uh, Peach Beach um, race track. But even then, though, just like before, that if you manage to let the Cataquack manage to get closer to you, then he'll able to fling you upwards. So even then, though, there's a good thing you do need to use him in the first place because as soon as you activate the forms of that question mark coin, we get ourselves our new power up. But he forms off as soon as we're able to collect those star bits first, and then after that, we can simply obtain it. You're transformed into Ice Mario. Shake the Wii Remote to skate, and uh, you can also walk on water too. So yeah, um, technically, if you ever uh, noticed by this point, the fact that the, about the fact that technically speaking, when it comes to the Ice Flower itself, this won't be the first time we've actually seen Ice Flower ever since, because that honor goes to the forms of uh, I would say Mario and Luigi partners in time, but except the fact that they usually chuck ice balls. But this time around, though, in Super Mario Galaxy especially that you transform into new forms of, well, Ice Mario. So you can then know that you are basically just a snowy, icy formation. So, 
Yeah, you can able to actually walk on water as much as you wanted to. But I believe this might be actually be the only uh, two power-ups in this game that actually incorporates the actual limited time. Because either way, I would say after 10 seconds or more than that, uh, the power-up itself will worn out and you have to able to actually cope it to able to deal with the limited system. So, there we go. The secret mission is called Wall Kicking Up Waterfall. So, it's basically, it's like the, um... It's kind of like the same thing for how it does in Super Mario 64 and one of those missions in Cool Cool Mountain that you have to uh, you have to like deal with the forms of too many wall um, kicking of the forms of that specific uh, wall you have to jump through uh, you know wall to wall and everything like that. So naturally, it's pretty much exactly the same thing for how he does it for this. So except the fact that um, you know you're doing with Ice Mario to able to actually deal with almost pretty much everything. So. So obviously we're going back in here yet again, but this time around though we'll do the proper mission by the forms of the secret undersea cavern once again. See, even then though, hopefully we can do it from here and onwards. So, yeah, and I forgot to able to grab those uh, star bits, so I just want to point things out. Another thing is worth mentioning though is the fact that alongside with the forms of the Powerpuff Girls, the 1998 uh, version on the forms of that DVD I just ordered by the forms of the main event, I also managed to able to order myself by the forms of our next Sega Saturn game by the forms of what else? Sonic R. Because the reason why, it was, uh, although it's a little bit redundant to able to actually get ourselves the Sega Saturn version of Sonic R in the first place, because I've already got Sonic R by the forms of Sonic Gems Collection compilation, but as far as I've noticed something is the fact that the Sonic Gems Collection version of Sonic R is actually based off from the ports from the PC version of the game, because obviously with the forms of the different graphical standpoints, and especially noticeable with a much more better load times in general, even by the forms of the Nintendo GameCube version, which Either way, that's as far as I can say about this for the most part. I know for the fact that in the Saturn version does have a pretty bad draw distance, but either way though, like the ones you're able to actually see on the horizon, which either way though, I would somewhat agree to that, but either way though, that's just how I think it is, so... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, anyways though, so um, I was being very curious to able to try out the Sonic R for the sake of Saturn to see if there are some slight differences in the forms of the actual PC version of the game, or in this case, Sonic Gems Collection version of the game, and especially noticeable by the forms of the Sacred Saturn version. And plus, luckily for me, that we still managed to able to go ourselves by the forms of that 3D Sacred Saturn controller, so I believe, um, alongside with Sonic Jam, by the forms of Sonic World mode, and especially noticeable with Sonic R, and along with the forms of Night into Dreams especially, uh, this is one of those Sega Saturn games that you can actually able to actually use the 3D controller, which either way though, I really appreciate it by this kind of stuff, because using a directional pad while you're simply moving around in a 3D 3D environment, it might actually be a lot more painful as far as I'm as far as I'm aware. Especially in some other games, like mainly for example, by the forms of like what's a game that is usually Influenced by the forms of the directional pad has become incredibly painful when you're dealing with the 3D gameplay aspect. Oh yes, Super Mario 64 DS. That usually back in the day, that Nintendo DS doesn't have an analog stick. You have to simply put, you have to deal with the forms of, well, the directional pad or the D-pad to be more precise. Or you can able to use the touchscreen to able to maneuver around your character. So, but at least even then though, I found a little bit of a pain in the stylus controls department. So... Anyways, though, hope that takes care of from that for now, and we'll go to, uh, I would say I might as well go for this for later, because I thought I'm actually going to be doing something a little bit more interesting to say much for this. Even then, though, we'll go ahead and explore through Ghostly Galaxy to see how this holds up. And the first mission we have in this galaxy is Luigi and the Haunted Mansion. Oh, is this like Luigi's Mansion all over again? I'm sure enough, it is. But except the fact that Luigi doesn't have himself the Poltergeist 3000 anytime, so... Especially noticeable by the forms of like... Well, before when Luigi's Mansion 2 came around, that um, he usually normally uses the Poltergeist 5000, and then the upcoming game, Luigi's Mansion 3, then he would able to actually get himself another Poltergeist, but I believe it's actually a different model compared to the forms of... Uh, well, the other two variations, which is, you know, the 3000 version and the 5000 version specifically. But even then, I will mention about that more details onto that whenever we do that Let's Play of that Luigi's Mansion 3 at some point in next year, or in this case, after we actually finished up with Luigi's Mansion 2 first, before we uh, jump into the third entry in the series. So even then, though, because I'm 
Still looking forward to that game. See, from then though, I still haven't heard anything new or anything like that. But I'm guessing you have to wait until it gets to like at some point in E3 2019. So expecting that would happen. See, from then though, I was expecting that because they need to be able to improve upon, you know, pretty much everything with the graphical standpoints, especially with the forms of a lot more expressions or anything like that. And plus with the improvement lighting, you know, kind of like how it did in the forms of back in E3 2016. That um, in that particular time, whenever you're trying to play uh, Birth by Sleep 0.2, the Fremitary Passage, in Evolved with back in E3 2016, that the lighting itself is a little bit off, but in the final version, they did manage to improve upon their lighting effects, which, either way, I will say the same thing by the forms of Luigi's Mansion 3, which, either way, though, that does need to be improved upon. And, um, who knows? We'll be able to actually know to find out until more in the future. See, Fernando, yeah. Oh, something is worth mentioning though, since the fact that we're going to be exploring for the most deadliest uh, galaxy of them all, Ghostly Galaxy, as I said this before. Um, the sad thing is though, is the fact that um, in during the likes, I forgot to mention about this in during yesterday, it's pretty sad to say about the fact that the Wii Shop channel is now died. See, even though no, I will say to say, rest in peace my old friend, especially because I really Still enjoyed the Wii Shop channel back in the day, especially purchasing by default of the old retro games here and there to see if I was mostly familiar with, even especially noticeable with any kind of Mario games out there. Especially noticeable by the forms of how the fact that it might be interesting to see some new interests that actually involves, like for instance by the forms of uh, uh, Blue's Journey for the new duo, and especially noticeable with Commodore 64 game, which is actually the only game I got on the Commodore 64, kind of thing about it. And that's what is the forms of, uh, well, the forms of, uh, Jumpman, so even then, though, yeah. And by the way, Luigi is there! Help! Of course we'll help you, Luigi, don't worry, bro, I will able to go after you, or in this case, just trying to save you. Now, for some reason, in Informsive back in 2007, I was having a hard time with this particular mission. I think it's most likely because since we were young that time, and then I just could not even get used to what the controls and the main mechanics looks like. But now I'm grown older a bit, that means I can now able to actually just become a lot more expertise every nowadays, especially because how easy it is. So, here we go with another transformation right here. You're transformed into Boo Mario, shake the Wii Remote to vanish. Think of like, you know, controlling the boo, except the fact that, you know, it's made out of Mario. See, even that note, because, you know, he still got himself the M cap right there, and he got himself his lovely mustache. Now, yeah, by simply, you have to simply just uh, go through these little fences, is that you have to shake the Wii remotes until you're able to bypass those fences. However, though, if you let that normal boo try to get to you, they actually got their love interest? What? But in order to actually get rid of the boo Mario, is the fact that you have to uh, either get hit by the enemy or just simply just get hit by the light. So there's Luigi right there. Bro, you finally came. I got lost with the toads. It was terrible. But I found a power star so that it makes up for it, right? Of course, I will still forgive you about this, Luigi, after when you got lost and all that stuff. But hey, uh, uh, pretty much fine by me. So we'll take the power star. Let's go home. Yes, indeed, Luigi. We will be going home. So there we go. We actually did manage to save him uh, for once. And um, yeah, that's as far as I can say. However, though, if you do manage to transform into the forms of Boom Mario this whole time, if you approach to Luigi, you will able to eventually get scared because, you know, Luigi is like always scared of pretty much every single ghost around here. So, wow, 55 coins. That's quite a lot for the actual mission itself, actually. Welcome back. Look. I can see your brother from here. If you ask him, I bet he'll help you search for power stars. I see how you get the point there. <laughs> and I'm sure he has a lot to tell you. You should go speak to him over there by the garage. Yes, which I might as well do that, because uh, if you think about it, that how the fact that this might be optional for you, well, no, if you really want to 100% through everything in this game, you have to talk to him before you're able to do with even more missions as a result. So let's go and speak to him. Bro, you're looking for power stars, right? Let me help. Of course you will be. I think you might ha have missed one in the Good Egg Galaxy. If I find it, I'll write you a letter, keep your eyes peeled for it. Of course, Luigi, I always count on you, so... 
We'll be back for that shortly because we need to complete the mission first. See, but then, no, let's just say, since after all we've managed to stumble across another prankster comet approaching, but I believe this is going to be takes place in uh, Beach Ball Galaxy, if I remember correctly, which is probably true because. Either way though, because of the forms of how the fact that we're going for that galaxy first, and all that stuff. So anyways, let's go ahead and- what the hell? What's going on- what's going on over there? <laughs> okay, I did not know that. So anyways, let's get into here, and of course we'll stumble across another prankster comment, which this time around though is actually in yellow, so... Very interesting right there. Which in this case, we have ourselves another comet type. So this time around though, we have is the Phospho Galaxy uh, Comet. So even then, let's get into it. Phospho's on the Cyclone Stone. Which is pretty much exactly the same mission as of how it does it in uh, the Secret Undersea Cavern. Except everything else is really, really fast. And um, as a result, um, well, again, if you made one simple mistake, if you get crushed or falling off, well, chances are you have to restart the entire mission again. So let's shortcuts await. Man, I love doing that. Especially how the fact that, well, when we get to Super Mario Galaxy, well, I'm not going to spoil anything, don't I? Oh, I think I should probably keep that as a silent moment right there. So, whoops. I feel a little bit spoiled right there for this point, folks. I do apologize for that. So, uh, another thing is kind of mentioning, though, for, uh, before we move on to the forms of the next new galaxy that we can able to explore for the time being, well, after dealing with the forms of, let's just say two things, which are, oh, I almost got crushed by that. So, yeah, basically, we actually introduced into ourselves by the forms of those, not only, well, We've already saw these forms ever since the forms of the past few Mario games, even though uh, they will still attempt to crush you every once in a while. In fact, unlike in Super Mario 64, they usually crush you for about a little bit of health down, but in Super Mario Galaxy 1, and especially with Super Mario Galaxy 2 especially, which we'll get into that in a moment and during the likes of that in the second half of 2019, forms this time around though can kill you instantly. See, for Nendo, you have to watch out for that, so... But, on the other hand though, we actually stumbled across those, uh, Tox boxes, which even then, if for those of you who ever played, um, let's just say, um, uh, Mario Party Island Tour before, in one of those mini-games that you have to able to hide inside the Tox box before you get squashed, it's basically a Last Man Standing mini-game, I'll get into more details on that later, so for now, you have a Luigi, or you have a letter from Luigi, that's what I meant to say. Bro, I got the star, but now I can't get back. This pic- this picture shows where I am. Help me! Hmm, where is that place? It looks familiar, but then, again, let me give you this picture so that you- that you won't forget where Luigi is. Again, I do apologize by the forms of my dialogue errors or anything like that, just because, well, I just got nothing more to say about it. See, but then, no. Uh, for, the, for now though, before we move on to the forms of the continuation of the Kitchen Dome, we're about to be hidden back to the forms of the Terra Stone to able to actually deal with, uh, well, Good Egg Galaxy for one simple reason, is that, if you can tell, we got ourselves are the secret mission that we have to deal with right there. So, where that secret mission is going to be located? Well, of course, it's actually on Dino Piranha, so... Even then though, I could assume because we might actually stumble across with Luigi for this point. So even then though, let's go ahead and deal with these whole buttons here of triple jumps. So that way we can deal with it easier. So there you go. You came to save me again? I knew I could count on you, bro. What? The power star? Oh yeah, I got it right here. So there we go, that's all you have to do in this mission. So you have to go on top of the actual house roof, and then that's all you have to do. So yeah, pretty simple and self-explanatory. It's actually not that difficult, actually. But even then, though, when we get to later on, I think we have to come across into these segments uh, three times. So naturally, we've only done this for about one time. So naturally, when we get to later on, it starts to get a little bit trickier and a little bit more lengthy, especially when we get to the, uh, the second counterpart, but I digress. So the hidden mission in this particular Good Egg Galaxy is Luigi on the roof. Because, you know, that's why he's always, uh, stand on, upon the forms of the actual roof, on the top of the actual roof. But anyways, though, let's just go ahead and, uh, return back to the forms of, uh, the Kitchen Dome. And able to, you know, just try to deal with more missions here and there. I think I should probably do one more mission for this video, but definitely a lot more when we get to the next video. See if another because... Well, I don't want to be able to actually extend the forms of the time length and all that stuff sometimes, but naturally speaking, I can able to cope with it just fine. So even then though, 
Uh, let us move on to, uh, we'll, say, we'll go back to Ghostly Galaxy until the next video, because for now, uh, we'll do Bubbly, or Bubble Breeze Galaxy. Sorry, I meant to say that. So anyways, though, um, I believe, you know, we've only got one mission to deal with for this point, so, through the Poison Swamp. And I believe we're actually going to be coming across into the forms of another uh, mechanic in this stage, which even then, though, we'll stumble across into that once we start this stage up. But for right now, we'll go ahead and see what the actual level itself looks like. It looks pretty deadly looking, as far as I can see. Because, obviously, the Poison Swamp will instantly kill you, so we better have to watch out for those. And, uh, you know, everything else is in Hulking Doy, except for that Star Shroom is being crash landed. So even then, though, I wonder who can fix that. Well, it's pretty impossible to tell, but either way, though, let's just go ahead and, uh... Yeah, you see this bubble right there? Like, it did manage to pop up for about, well, usually for that one time alone. Uh, basically, this is how the actual main mechanic of the forms of this stage actually represents. You're actually gonna be taking control of the actual bubble. Well, not the entire bubble though, because unlike in Mario Party 9 Bumper Ball, or Bumper Bubbles is what I meant to say, slash, uh, Mario Party The Top 100, and even especially noticeable with, uh, I would say but he forms off a little bit in uh, Sky Jinx, Sky Jinx minigame in Mario Party 9 that you can able to take control of the actual bubble itself but naturally in this game in order to actually just to uh, uh, you, you know you have to simply guide the actual bubble by simply we need to be able to use the pointer at all times and then basically we need to carefully uh, guide the actual bubble when you're able to actually get to this next section in this case a launch star and occasionally a power star at the very end, as you can see on the far right. So, but even then, I'm presuming we have to deal with this twice for the majority of this game. So even then, though, that um, at least this one is not too bad, though, and not too difficult either. But the only things you need to worry about is the forms of the actual mine bombs and all that stuff. And especially notice of all, you really don't want to accidentally press the Z button because if you do accidentally just manage to activate the ground pound technique, uh, you're able to exit out the forms of the actual bubble itself. So that's why. Uh, my finger, or in this case, I don't have my fingers on me because I've only just got one hand on me. But I'm going to have to keep my uh, hand away from the Z bar for the time being. Because I'm going to simply just use the Wii remote until I'm able to actually guide the actual bubble very, very carefully. A little bit more steady because either way though, uh, again, if you made one simple mistake on this, then obviously if you uh, touch the poison swamp, well, you automatically die. So even then, though, yeah. Uh, thankfully though, just like any forms of uh, Sling Pod Galaxy, uh, this stage is very generous with you when it comes to checkpoints and all that stuff. I believe there are only about uh, two of them for the time. Well, the beginning part doesn't count because you have to go for the entire first section without any sort of circumstances. But in the forms of the second half of the stage, well, one is actually at the very beginning of the second half, and the other one, which is actually on that point right there, where I simply managed to bypassing it through. So even then though, that's all there is to know. Oh, just only three more coins left until I get an extra life by simply collecting those 50 coins. Yeah. And I've got about 31 of those extra lives, which is quite surprising. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Almost... Oh, stop that. <laughs> what do you expect me to do? Just trying to kill myself and all that stuff? Just lose a life in the process? I mean, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Anyways, though, I think that pretty much does it from this point right there. So, and I believe... We are done with everything when it comes to Bubble Breeze Galaxy itself. Yeah, because of that, you know, Galaxy complete crown right there. So, yeah, I'm afraid, guys, we got the endings off at this point right there. So join me next time on Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy. Is the fact that we're about to be continuing exploring through the forms of the Kitchen Dome by simply going back to Ghostly Galaxy. So, so see you guys then. Later, fellas.